in chapter 23, problem 19, we're provided a road map and asked to give the structures of compounds A through E. So we can approach this as just a series of individual reactions. So we're going to keep with our general strategy of determining what the major functional group is and what these reagents are doing to that functional group. We're starting with one octine and we're treating that with sodium amide in ammonia. So ammonia is going to be our solvent. So this is non-participating in the actual reaction. It is just there to solubilize the starting materials. So let's go ahead and draw out one octine. So YNE signifies it's an alkyne. Oct signifies that it's eight carbon atoms, and the one tells us where the alkyne triple bond begins. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to draw the triple bond beginning at carbon one. So this is a special type of alkyne in terms of our classification. It is a terminal alkyne. So alkynes can be either terminal or internal. So why is this special? This hydrogen here is acidic. It has a pKa of approximately 25. We're treating that with sodium amide. And I'm going to just draw in the lone electron pairs and how the formal charges are assigned in this compound. So sodium amide is going to act as a base. And bases abstract acidic hydrogens. And we're going to form a sodium acetylide. So the, the structure of A will have a carbanion and a sodium cation. So we can see that all we've done is remove a proton from octine and now we have a sodium cation. So this matches the, the structure we've proposed. So there's our check. The molecular formula matches this structure. We're treating this, so let's view this as a, a second step. We're treating a sodium acetylide with this compound here. So what you'll notice is this is a difunctional compound. It has an iodine and a chlorine. And we're given a clue in the molecular formula here, C17H31Cl. So whatever we propose as the product, it still has to have the chlorine atom in the product. So notice in the molecular formula, there's no iodine. So this is an SN2 reaction mechanism. We have a nucleophile, which is going to attack an electrophilic carbon. We're then going to break the carbon iodine bond. Our byproduct will be sodium iodide, the inorganic byproduct. The organic product is then going to be the following. And I'm just going to put parentheses for the CH2, 7, and then draw our CL. So our proposed structure matches the molecular formula, C17H31Cl. We're now treating this compound, this chloride, with sodium cyanide. Sodium cyanide is now going to be a nucleophile. In our substrate, 
the carbon bearing the chlorine has a delta positive charge. So re remember that this is a sign by electronegativity and the dipole moment looks like this. So we have a, a lone electron pair in cyanide. We're going to do another SN2 reaction to displace the chlorine. Our inorganic byproduct will be sodium chloride. And then our organic product is going to be a nitrile. So you can see in, in the molecular formula difference, C17H31Cl, we're now at C18H31N. So we've substituted the chlorine for a nitrogen and then we've added a carbon. So this functional group is called a nitrile. So we can use the term nitrile or cyanide interchangeably. What is happening in this next step, we're treating the nitrile with potassium hydroxide in water. So this is going to be a hydrolysis. If we compare the molecular formula of C with that of D, we can see what is changing is that we are losing the nitrogen, we are adding two oxygens and a potassium. So this is going to hydrolyze the nitrile into a potassium carboxylate. So this part of the chain does not uh, change in, in carbon count. So that's one, two, three, four, five. I'm just going to put that a five right there. Then we have our triple bond. We continue on with this portion. of the other side of the alkyne. So we have seven, eight, nine on this side, methylene groups. The carboxylate residue will now look like this. We put in our lone pairs and assign formal charge. The oxygen is negative. Potassium is the counter ion, that's positive. So you'll notice this is now an internal alkyne. So there's no acidic protons associated with that alkyne anymore. Our next step, we're treating the carboxylate with acid. All this is going to do is protonate to give us the carboxylic acid. So you'll notice in the molecular formula that we go from H31 to H32. So we've protonated, we have our carboxylic acid. Now we're treating with hydrogen gas, the transition metal palladium in the presence of barium sulfate. So you should recognize this as hydrogenation. Then these conditions are Lindlar's catalyst. With Lindlar's catalyst, we're going to reduce the alkyne triple bond to an alkene by adding one equivalent of molecular hydrogen across that triple bond. And we're going to do it in a geometrically pure fashion, so we end up with this cis alkene. So we've added the hydrogen across the same face of that alkyne. The geometry is now cis. 
we fill in our methylene spacers and put in our carboxylic acid. So this is our product which matches the molecular formula C18H34O2.